Hello everybody, this is Bulldozer Investing. Today is December 21st, 2020. It is after market hours on a Monday. Um, this was a very interesting day again. The futures had crashed due to some news in UK that the COVID is on another spree and it is on a mutation and it is, you know, harder to recover and so forth. So the futures had crashed in Europe and it affected us. And then the stimulus package was lackluster. Um, $600 checks was not really something that we were hoping for. So everything looked negative. However, I kept saying that it doesn't matter what you and I get. It is what the banks get. It is what the mutual funds get. It is what the big guys get. Basically, the Fed is raining money on them. Okay, Unlimited resource of money, 0%, close to 0% interest, and market will react to that sooner or later. And we have the Santa rally coming up this week and next week. And this will last. We will melt up probably till the end of January. Now, let's begin our analysis. Let's talk about, I know I always have Palantir on my screen, but let's go to SPY. Um, I was kind of wrong on many levels because, wow, what is this candle? What is this wick? Did we even, I'm not sure if this is a misprint, but it did hit our target. Uh, let's go ahead and do hourly i don't know what's going on with this week maybe it was some type of uh, glitch because that week was kind of throwing me off for a bit um i have a lot of lines here that's fine uh we broke down the the flag came back retested this level guys I, i've drawn this around right here so december 10th we hit the bottom of the box basically filled the gap we were looking for an excuse huge buy volume at the end of the day bear trap now i'm gonna watch the futures closely because it still seems like we're on a resistance here but it looks like we're forming inverse head and shoulder um we are the first level of resistance will be 371 we are on our way to 375 and 378 if not by this week end of next week so i am bullish on spy let's go to apple with Apple, what did I say? I'm waiting for 121, and we were up here, guys. I was like, if Apple drops, they're going to give us another chance. Again, fill the gap opportunity. We got that chance. I bought very good options, by the way. Very nice options. I could, I, I should have been more patient if I had waited. So these option prices are so ridiculous. Apple, by the way, is hitting 133 this week. It's already 132, I think, around there by now. So by tomorrow, 133. Um, and then the upper trend level here is 139. I will not be surprised if we hit 139 on the 24th. Okay? Uh, Apple Car News, which I mentioned on one of my, I think, either YouTube, Discord, or Twitter. I did mention that um, you have, um, what's that company? Um, how did I forget their name? Baidu calling, you know, electric vehicle, they're getting into that sector. I was like, I will not be surprised if Apple news comes out, you know, news comes out for Apple that they're starting. And they, and I said, that is how we'll get to, let's open weekly. And I said, that is how we will get to my price target of 188, which is about 40%. Actually, it's nothing considering how much value the uh, Tesla has. Um, if Apple were to gain, you know, six seven hundred billion value in shares that's almost like 50 i don't know 40 per, which is equivalent so which is around um 188 that's my target okay by you know spring or spring early summer i'm gonna wait for palantir make my money reach my target from there and once apple reaches 143 levels it will bounce back to around 130s retest and then fly back and that's when we will get it but every target we put out every target we put out on 
all of these stocks had been spot on. Okay. Um, speaking of our targets, we said NNDM. Okay. Ten fifty-five, and it is already at eight thirty-eight. When did I say this? I, I posted on Twitter when this thing was like six dollars and some change. Now the volume, it's weekly, so let's go to daily. I said I'm not seeing anything but buying institutional buying. Okay. The chart looks super bullish, and this baby is going to fly to this target right here. Actually, 13. $13 eventually, but I was being more conservative at 1055 for a sooner target, and this can just go all the way up. Because if you actually seen the stock where it's falling from, huge resistance around $12. So it does make sense that we hit around 13 is pretty good. Okay. Um, NNDM worked out fine. 17% today, guys. I told everybody to get in last Friday. If you've gotten in Friday, that's around like 20% in day and a half. Okay? Ridiculous amount of gains. Okay? We talked about solo last Friday. It is forming a cup and handle. Um, it is more legible. It is more clear on the, I think it was four hour chart. Yeah, I've drawn this in four hour chart and it is a little more clear. Um, it looks like it's resisting on this cup level. If we break out, the first resistance is 774. My target for this one is 1092. It will have a major cloud resistance at $8. So if you want to sell it there, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and look at Blink, which had a pretty good recovery today. Broke out on the hourly, which I have also on live Twitter. Right here, I said you can get in. It broke out on the uh, falling wedge. It was 35 bucks. It went instantly within an hour. It went to $39. Okay. Finished the day with, I don't know what the after hours uh, price is, but finished the day with 3.5%. Okay. This baby is on or on. Remember last Friday, I said we're looking for a discount. We did get a huge bounce around the uh, 70, 7860 levels. Okay. I was looking for a more deeper discount of 33, but I said, look, the wedge is broken out. The technicals are good. It's kind of like right here. This baby is good to go for another huge run. I am expecting 42 this week and maybe next week by 53. Now I'm giving big targets here, and the reason why is very clear reason why is very clear we talked about low float of shares and we talked about high percentage of shorts um, we do have a resistance on this trend line okay I didn't draw this it's automatically drawn by Finvis but if we break out that's gonna be a huge run okay. there's nothing wrong with waiting for this that's fine um, if you have the fear of missing out the FOMO um, invest a little and let it ride um, what was another great stock that we mentioned? AI had a huge day today. I think another 17% or 16.93 broke out of this. And I said, like, I wouldn't touch it because it, like, touched right here. Broke the wedge. And I said, if it breaks out, it'll go. And right around, it's sitting right around that 161. If it continues, it'll hit 198. Um, and it'll run good volume. Uh, I did, I was wrong on this one. Well, I didn't say shorter or anything. I just said like we kind of missed it and there's a resistance around here. Picked up after hours and keep on running. So if you'd still want to play, my target was uh, uh, 172. So it looks like it's heading there. Okay. Um, what else did we talk about the other day? Corsair. I said it will not... Microsoft's decision will not affect Corsair. Corsair had a 7.7.5% 7 .7 run. My target was 42 to 44, so it's getting there. Okay. Everything we said last Friday, it is going. My prediction on this one was that it's forming a WM flagging. 
and it'll go up. And when this baby goes up, my target is $70. Maybe the first level would be, you know, 63, but in the long run, it's going to go to 70. Okay? Um, what else, what, what other opportunities are there? Well, we talked about Apple. I'm going to go long Apple. Um, I didn't have enough cash to go long on Apple. So what I did was I bought December 31st, 130 calls when Apple was $125. If I had waited a little, like 30 minutes, options I bought, I bought them at $1.30. It dropped to 83 cents. Missed it by 30 cents. I missed it by 30 minutes. If I had only waited 30 minutes, it's just luck. Sometimes, I mean, technicals, you can't really be spot on. But finished the day with 53%. And then Apple moved way above 130. So I'm guessing I'm probably going to make 200% two, uh, tomorrow on those calls. On one of our uh, members, I told him if he wants to risk it, 23 cents. Uh, the weekly uh, 130 calls. Had him start from uh, 40 cents and average it all the way down to 25 cents. Um, finish the day huge and it will open huge tomorrow okay so sometimes when you have when you're invested into a stock heavily and you have some spare change um, you you might want to uh, leverage that by playing very apparent options we talked about space I said I'm a holder I'm waiting um, on the daily I don't see like a huge breakout yet because this channel is still going on. It, 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 it is again on a wedge. So if you want to position right now, that's fine. But it has a resistance at 2480. I will be a buyer and I, I mean, I can't like buy everything. So I will wait. I'll wait patiently for this one. But if it goes up, it'll go up. I'm bullish on the stock anyways. I'm not bearish. But it's just to me, it just feels like anything can happen. A drop can happen. Okay, A, a drop can happen and it won't surprise me. Somewhere around here. So it still seems like it's on a falling wedge, which is bullish. It's okay. Uh, inside day, a uh, reversal hammer, finish the day strong and stop at the resistance of the fib level. Okay. If this moves up 29 and 31, but let's be patient with this one. We can't buy everything. We just have to position, right? Sometimes you win by waiting. Um, you make the most amount of money by entering the position in the right time with the right amount. Okay. Facebook was lagging. Uh, which I believe it's coiling up. Okay, let's change the color. So Facebook is another one that I'll be watching carefully. It is a good spot to buy some options and leverage. Um, I will probably get out of my Apple options tomorrow end of day and maybe buy um, Facebook options for January 15th, uh, three tens. I'll have to take a look at the uh, IV, the volume and everything. I can't just say anything right now, but my target for Facebook is 346. Long-term target on Facebook is 410, okay? Um, once I get out of Palantir, once it reaches my target, I'm probably gonna position into Facebook and Apple. Netflix. I, I don't know what I, I saw after hours. I'm not sure if I was seeing it correctly. Um, but I thought Netflix moved like 5%. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe I'm taking a mistake. No, I think I saw something else. Never mind on Netflix. Um, Netflix did break out, by the way. But I'm not huge on the name. Let's check out Netflix's float. I think it doesn't have like a two, like low float, so it could fly. Yeah, I mean, five, less than 500 million shares. I do think it's going to go to 562. Okay. That's Netflix. Uh, another name that I saved for last is my favorite stock, Palantir. Okay. 
Now you see a lot of chartists on uh, Twitter. They keep adjusting the lines. You know, when it falls, they take the line lower. When it goes, you know, when it falls, like they adjust all these things. Don't. Just, you know, stop trying to make yourself look like you're guessing it right. Because it's ridiculous when I see your charts before and after. Like you can clearly match those and you're just playing with the lines. Um, this thing has a huge resistance, which I posted today, right on this line. When when the stock was 27.97, I said it will close the day on nearly 28.64, 28.70, where a huge resistance is, which is this trend line that has been acting like a resistance. I'm still very cautious with this name. I do have a huge position. Um, has a has broken out of the 28.20 level, very nice. Okay. It will act as a support from going on. Um, next level of resistance is 28.98, so let's call it 29 bucks. Uh, my target for this week is 30 to 31. We're waiting for um, push higher on this one, but the fact that we couldn't break this channel, it is kind of concerning for me. Um, I am bullish, but I don't want to like act like a clown and a cheerleader and say it's going higher, it's going higher. We have to watch. I'm very conservative when I call targets. I'm very conservative and patient. Huge day, huge green candle today. Good volume. I think we're breaking out with this one. Okay. Everybody and their mother can see that there's a pennant here and it's breaking out. The fact that it's like you have to you have to have some courage. This thing is going all the way to 45 bucks. Okay. Don't jump around. Be patient. And this thing is going to eventually run, but some people are not positioned correctly. So if your average was 28 and you didn't have enough cash to average down here, you positioned wrong. Okay? So let's see what happens. But my target for this week is $31, 30 to 31. We might have a small pullback to 29. So I'll just, this is what will happen. Let me go ahead and do this. This will go here. Come back, find the support around these areas, okay? And then let's draw another one. And then it'll, you know, bounce between these levels. And eventually just, yeah. And eventually, We'll get some news or something else, and it'll eventually get to you. Now, I'm not like it's, it might not like go up all the way like in one day, but as you can see, like hitting the targets here, hitting the targets of you know the fib levels, the trend lines, fib level, get a support, hit the hundred percent, get another support at the fib and where the um, uh, the channel line is, support is, and then eventually it'll go to forty one. Eventually, eventually, as you can see. If I don't want to be conservative, eventually it'll go. Okay. So the resistance will be if you if you see it clearly that the middle of the channel and where the uh, Fibonacci meets is 42, 41 area. So I believe we'll break and then come back. Okay. So this is this is my estimation that we'll get here eventually once we get there. We'll, we'll then, you know, re-estimate. We'll, if you're here for a long term, hold it for a year or two. That's that's your decision. You know, I'm, I'm a swing trader here. I saw the opportunity. It's a false breakdown. Uh, manipulative, you know, price actions, you know, credit companies calling them down. They want to buy it cheaper, uh, but they didn't get that to the huge, nice, nice support by the bulls. Broke out. Finished it right about the pennant, but I do want to see... Like, go in the channel and hit this target. Hit this target. As you can see, that this is what will happen. We're at the bottom of the channel. We'll hit the middle uh, resistance of the channel. Exactly what's going to happen. We're going to get some news and we're going to hit the resistance of the channel, which is around you know, 100%, 35, 36. Then we'll come back. We'll come back just like this. So if you see this, We'll do the same thing. Come back here. Okay. 
So it'll look something like this. Like we have, we're zigzagging from the middle down, getting the support, consolidating. Middle down. Now, if, if it goes strong and breaks out, that's one, you know, that can happen. But let's just be conservative. First target is 35.36. Second target is 41 to 42. That's, that's, my, that's my understanding from this chart. So that is it, guys. Um, if you would like to see more charts, more names, uh, please, uh, you know, tweet me, you know, send me a private message. Um, you can comment on YouTube channel and we'll discuss the charts. The market is super bullish. The VIX was crushed down. It is still, it finished the day higher than what I thought it would. Um, holiday week, strong December and January, and we'll see what happens in February. My spy target before we see a real drop. Dead on with this one. Look how accurate we were with this box. Um, and look how, I, I don't know what's up with this week, but let's hit for 378, which I think will happen this sometime this week, next week. And huge resistance at 387. And my ultimate target is 400. Then we'll reevaluate. But the, I would say the most I, I judge I judge where the market is going by what I see in Apple. If Apple breaks out, if Apple breaks above 143, which is my target by end of this month, we the market will not crash. We always see when the market crashes, we always see rounding top by Apple, something like this. So let your let Apple be your indicator. If the mark if the if the price action round top you know top round, it'll drop. Okay, we'll have some swings here and there, but Apple right now does not look like the previous two drops. Just like here, that's the 2018 crash. Just like here, as you can see, we don't see something like this with Apple yet. Now we are probably right around the stage in Apple. If Apple comes and hits the all-time high, bounces and loses the cloud su support, then we'll reevaluate where the where we're guessing the market direction is. If it loses a cloud uh, support, that's when overall the market might crash as well. But right now, at a bigger level, um, we have to see if this 143 gets breaking out. For now, 143 is our target. It will do something like this. It'll hit 143, maybe get a support at 130 and move up eventually. But let's just take it one week at a time, two week at a time. And we're not a fortune teller here. So we're just trying to move along with the market direction, clear support. Everything we've drawn has acted pretty well. Okay. Which I thought Apple might get down here. Um, I think around 6 a.m. or so, like it did actually touch like low 122s, which I said it would come down to, but it wasn't a tradable hour for me anyways. I bought the options right around after it broke out of um, the FIB level of 78.60. But that's it, guys. Have a nice weekend. I'm super happy. I officially finished the day. So let me take a screenshot. I finished the day pretty strong, and this is an equity account. With a very small, I think I put like $500 on Apple option. Um, let me take a screenshot here. I finished the day with 21.86 plus some change after hours. And I think when Apple options that I had opens up tomorrow, I will probably finish around like 25-26%. And then tomorrow hoping to get another 10% on a nice volunteer move. Okay. So let's keep it up, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, follow the channel, follow us on Twitter. Um, our Twitter handle is, let's go to our channel, our Twitter handle. Our Twitter handle is bulldozer underscore INVST. Uh, give us a follow. We just started um, tweeting. I've, I've not been tweeting for a year opened it but never use it actively so let's get let's give a like follow it and i am actually 
and here this was a great call i said it's flagging the resistance around which it hit right here so if you follow my tweets and doing like a you know trading on day day trading i do give out a couple of signals here flagging to the upside okay which it did and it hit the resistance okay um let's keep it up guys let's make some money have a nice day and enjoy the rest of the night.